Dearly brothers, sisters and brothers, once again Father is here greeting you all in the name of Jesus. We are on 110th day of our Bible pilgrimage. So for our reading and reflection today we had Judges chapters 8 and 9 and Psalm 68 with the Acts of the Apostles chapter 21. In Judges chapter 9 we have the story of uh, Abimelech. We have already studied the life of uh, Gideon and so how God worked through his life. Gideon was in the beginning a fearful, backward and uh, unwilling man when it comes to uh, trusting God. But once Gideon decided to put his trust in God and follow his commands, God did some pretty amazing things through Gideon. But we find at the close of chapter 8 of the uh, book of Judges that Gideon had many wives and uh, 70 children. Then he had another son from a concubine who was in Shechem and that son was Abimelech. It's obvious that Gideon didn't live up to the heights of uh, his occasion and his call. Instead, he led a life fulfilling his own wanton her desires. So we see Gideon's son Abimelech was arrogant, selfish and uh, really rebellious towards God. Unlike the other leaders who preceded him, Abimelech was not chosen by God to lead. Instead, he appointed himself as leader and king. So we find uh, two, three things in his life. The first thing is he manipulated the people, the people of Shechem, especially we find. The people of Shechem had uh, become idol worshippers. So we read in chapter 9, verse 3, their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech. The reason actually is, you know, when they were in idol worship, they were blinded to the truth. So they couldn't take the right decision and so on because they were living in sin. Idol worship was the uh, real root uh, of the destruction, the impending destruction of Shechem, Shechemites. So they didn't realize the evil in supporting injustice and sin. So they, their heart inclined to this sinful man. So not only that, we find they gave him 70 silver, uh, 70 pieces of silver out of the house of uh, Balbarith. That's what we find. Out of the house of Balbarith, that means uh, is a temple of idol. They themselves had, you know, erected one temple for idol. And from that temple, they took out 70 pieces of silver and gave this to this man verse 4 of chapter 9 and next thing is Abimelech used that 70 pieces of silver to hire some worthless and reckless and violent fellows violent men who followed him so now Abimelech is forging them to a, a squad of a, what a political hitmen you know so we see Abimelech was not a leader because he was gifted or he had the merit of uh, any any virtues in him but he literally you know bought his office and he led by terrorism so what is happening next what he does words 5 says Chapter 9, verse 5. And he went to his father's house at uh, Ophra and slew his brothers, the sons of uh, 
Jerubal, that is Gideon. Seventy men upon one stone. But Jotham, the youngest son of uh, Jerubal, that is Gideon, was left, for he hid himself. So almost sixty-nine his, of his uh, siblings he slew at a stone. So on top of a single stone he killed his brothers. There were seventy. Uh, but he could kill sixty-nine. One escaped. His name was Jotham. So, 70 pieces of silver that he brought, you know, he got from the temple of idols. That's 70, you know, pieces of silver. Actually, the 70 murder or 69 murder already. See, Bible says the evil one, you know, he comes only to steal, kill and destroy. So, that 70 pieces of silver had something here in his life. He killed 69. One escaped. But, you know, in that space of one, you know what will happen later. This is connected. So, then we read in verse 6. Verse 6. And all the citizens of Shechem came together and all Beth Milo, and they went and made Abimelech king by the oak of uh, uh, Shechem. You know this oak of Shechem we find in the book of Joshua chapter 24-26 I hope you remember Joshua had erected a stone as a witness to their commitment to God. When they renewed their commitment to God the, uh, Joshua said uh, you yourself are witness and one more witness this stone so he erected that stone there by the oak and there only they have uh, opted for this man as the king praise the lord now we have some five lessons from the episode of uh, abimelech the first lesson is this a chosen man's fall can bring law of sufferings, increased sufferings and distress to his community, also his family. Yes, I am speaking about Gedeon. You know, when he was obedient, he became an instrument of blessing for the family and for the entire community. Later, when he disobeyed and had sons from a concubine, he is bringing disaster into his own family and to his own people. So, Abimelech is a symbol of this disobedience of uh, Gideon. So Matthew chapter 12, 30 says, anyone who does not gather with me scatters. You know, against the Lord, when you gather something, when you have even children, they become, you know, destructive. They, sh they literally scatter. So that's happened here. That's the first uh, lesson. Then we go to the second lesson. That is, instrument of sin becomes instrument of punishment. Several times Father had already told you this. So that is from Wisdom 11.16. Instrument of sin becomes instrument of punishment. Let's see how it is working here. The people of Shechem, they had strengthened the hands of Abimelech to slay his brothers. So they were partakers of that sin. So now they are destroyed by the same man, Abimelech. Abimelech becomes an instrument of destruction. Through him they are destroyed. That's what we find here. Their city also was completely you know, destroyed. Another thing is, Shechem people had a temple of uh, idol, that uh, house of Balbor, let's say. So an uh, idol Baal was worshipped there in that temple. Words 4 out of which they had given 70 silver pieces to Abimelech. You know, that's what we have seen. Uh, but later, in verses uh, 46 to 49 of same chapter, chapter 9, we find same temple became the place of death and disaster. In that temple, many were killed. More than 1,000 Shechemites were burned to death in that temple. So, that temple was an instrument of sin. It becomes instrument of punishment. 
Another thing, Abimelech was a man who hopelessly murdered his own family, almost 69 of his brothers, over a stone. Bible says, on single stone he killed them. Now, and at the end, this man Abimelech was killed by a stone. He was killed by a stone that was dropped on his head. So, there a stone, he killed many, and here a stone kills him and thus he becomes the 70th you know 69 he had killed on a stone 70 70 uh, pieces of silver from the evil place of worship he had brought and he became the 70th one he had uh, and uh, you know that that stone uh, uh, fell on his head you know somebody one one woman uh, uh, threw this uh, one upper millstone they called and it fell on him and he died. Verse 53 of chapter 9 speaks about that. Another thing is when the millstone came down on his head, it crushed his skull. That's what the Bible says in verse 53. It crushed his skull. That was the same head that had worn the crown. See, God had not put that crown, in, uh, crown there in Abimelech's head. So he had manipulated the people to crown, uh, you know, him king by the side of the stone where it was, I told already, it was by the side of the stone which Joshua erected as a witness. So the Lord allowed a stone to crush Abimelech's head, symbolizing that he was not the true king. So instrument of sin, instrument of punishment, punishment for sin will take the same form of sin itself. It is not a simple thing. It is happening here several times in this chapter. Praise the Lord. And the third lesson that we learn is that we need to get control of our ego and pride. If not, ego can bring eternal damnation. That we find from his life here. See, Abimelech, he was hit with a stone and injury was fatal. But he still had not died. He had some more time left. And then he is crying out what we find. Verse 54, verse 53. But a woman threw a millstone down on his head and fractured his skull. Then he quickly called the young man who was carrying his weapons. That is the armor bearer. And told him, draw your sword and kill me. I don't want it said that a woman killed me. I don't want it said that a woman killed me. See? Instead of remorse for his murderous past, or instead of calling out for mercy to the one before whom he had to give all his account, this man is worried about what his obituary is going to say. See, he was concerned about his reputation. That is super, super ego. That is too much. That, that even didn't allow him to repent at the last moment of his life. That is the, you know, the evil called pride and ego. So that is why the acrostic of the word ego, someone said, urging God out e g o urging god out so when ego is there you don't get even uh, you know you don't get to repent even at the last moment such evil it is it clings to the soul and uh, destroys the soul so that's why we have to be very very careful about ego and uh, pride hallelujah now the fourth lesson from the story of abimala is something that we should always remember that is we already have a king and we are in his kingdom the kingdom of God so don't appoint yourself as a king and do not appoint somebody else also hallelujah so our Lord reigns and he is still in control so accept his authority acknowledge his kingship in every aspect of our, and every area of our lives. 
we need to humbly submit to him and to his authority how through our humility of course that is why jesus said unless you become like little children you will not enter the kingdom of heaven so all the fame and all the wealth and all the pleasures and uh, all the accomplishments cannot forgive our sins and cannot you know it cannot give that lasting fulfillment in our lives only our king jesus can do it praise the lord see in the parable of the trees in this chapter uh, you know proclaimed by jotham one who escaped from the murder of by uh, this man abimelech so uh, jotham the last you know the youngest child youngest son of uh, gideon so he proclaimed this parable from uh, mount gerizim i hope you remember gerizim uh, mount gerizim and mount eba so verses 7 to 20 we find that beautiful parable of trees so here he apparently sees his father gideon's refusal to take the throne paralleled in the actions of the useful trees they they are uh, denying you know kingship like uh, olive tree the fig tree and the grape vine so and but abimelech seeking the throne portrayed in those of the bramble so uh, that is why you know gideon himself had proclaimed in a chapter 8 verse 23 god alone will be our king hallelujah so we have here the fifth and the last lesson that is god can use anybody even his enemies to accomplish his will and his plans his authority is the supreme so obviously we find god was not pleased with uh, abimelech's life but god took the malicious self serving plans made by this corrupt leader and he used them to accomplish his purpose of exacting punishment on the shekamites who had even uh, you know built a, a temple of pagan god for themselves so although abimelech's story is one of rebellion and disobedience we find that god used him not because of what he had done i repeat not because what he had done but in spite of what he had done hallelujah dear ones god's plans and god's purposes are greater than the evil plans of satan believe it even when satan manages to get his people in places of leadership and uh, places of influence god still has the power to accomplish his will he can bring out greater good in such situations praise the lord sometimes we people panic when we find some unworthy people rising to positions or prominence maybe about corrupt politicians or in any level you know local level in the organization where you are or in the parish uh, uh, committees or parish administration or maybe in your workplace you may be working under a tyrant maybe very cruel boss the message is this do not panic don't fall into depression and despair trust the lord god can work through anybody to get done what he wants done you need to trust and you need to accept his authority by humble submission praise the lord so these are the beautiful messages we get from the story of abimelech hallelujah now we are not entering into uh, in detail upon to psalm 68 actually psalm 68 is uh, is sung when ark of the covenant which was taken by the philistines is being brought back to jerusalem by uh, david so that procession uh, in front of the lord's uh, covenant uh, box you know the, uh, the tabernacle that scene also here the lord is proclaimed as the lord who fights for us who wins battles for us we only need to submit to him and we need to praise god of host then acts chapter 21 we find the end of the third missionary journey of saint paul 
and then Paul is in Jerusalem where he is arrested. So later we, as we are going to, uh, you know, uh, in in greater detail we will see this especially Acts of the Apostles. So we take leave now. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.